Hi, welcome to Data Engineering and today we are going to discuss about top 10 interview questions that I used to ask if I am an interviewer. So I have 8 years of experience so in 2021 by next week I will be like around I will complete my 8 years of experience in my IT world and uh, this throughout this 8 years I have been I was, I was been working and I am working in big data technology stack only. So I have attended so many interviews and I have been uh, as an interviewer as well. Okay, so so uh, here is the 10 question that I used to ask. Okay, this is personally it's, these 10 questions are my my personal uh, thing that I always use used to ask only these 10 questions to select a candidate. So I'm just sharing you these 10 questions. But before getting into this, I want to tell you one thing. This video, I'm going to explain the questions only. I'm not going to give the answers because I don't want to uh, increase the length of the video. But as, as like I am going to make an, another video in which I am going to explain you all the solutions. So that video link will be there in the description of box of this video. If it's not there yet, please wait. I will make a video within a week and I will update the description, uh, the link in the description box. Fine. So if you go for any big data interview, it it will be divided into three things. So one is uh, the questions will ask from uh, they will ask all the questions from big data tech stack. Uh, they can ask you about your project or whatever the questions programs and so many uh, so so and so stuff within big data. First part. Second part is a programming language, general programming language. So and then third SQL. So like if they ask you like 70 percentage here and 15 percentage here and 15 percentage here, roughly it will split in this way. Okay, now I'm going to discuss only uh, this big data uh, questions that I used to ask always to filter a candidate. So I will just give you the list of questions, but my question uh, will cover only these two tech stacks, Hive and Spark, and in Spark only Batch and Spark SQL, not Spark Streaming. Okay, so 80% of any projects till date, uh, if you go like people are using Hive and Spark only. So that is the main reason that I am not that much into asking a NoSQL database or Kafka or Spark streaming or any other visualization technology. I won't ask only if it is required for the team. I used to ask questions from that. If it is a general big data engineering without uh, uh, any specific tech stack. Right, I will never ask those extra stuff. So I will ask only Hive and Spark. My my concentration only will be within this thing. So I will tell you the 10 questions. So these 10 questions out of which if six questions is correct, I will consider the candidate for the next round. If not, I will not consider. I will tell you the list of questions, but when I say for some people it will be very uh, easy and some people used to think these 10 questions are very easy for me and it's very um, very light for me. So if you think in that way, it's fine. Uh, that means you are really uh, good enough to get into the uh, uh, picture actually. So because uh, see my intention of uh, selecting a candidate is not whether you have an experience or you have only learning experience or you have only a real time experience, which is hard for the interviewer to really validate. That's that's a fact actually. So some people will not accept, but that's a fact. So if you have if you have just a learning experience, but it's your talent to explain that even you had a real-time experience you can even say in that way right or some people used to have a very good knowledge but their presentation skill will not be good so people the interviewer will think okay he has only the learning experience so that might be a wrong decision by the interviewer right because that is a hard part for the interviewer to identify the candidate so the only thing what I always used to do is if you are able to answer these 10 questions at least six to seven questions then I used to believe you I, I, it's not like I used to believe you uh, for real time or you have only learning experience. No, it's not like that. I believe you that you are capable of doing something in the project. I believe you actually. So then it's it's a choice that I'm, 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 I'll make that I can give you an opportunity. So that is what my intention is. So as I told you, in, in, I cannot va validate the candidate whether he has a real time experience or not. So I will just go with these 10 questions only. Fine. So I will just start listing out those 10 questions. The very first question I will ask just from Hive. So I will ask partition and bucket. Okay. The first question seems to be very easy. That's what you are thinking, right? Yes. So this is a very easy question. Even people are in learning phase or they are new to big data or they have experience for any categories of people. Uh, it, this question will be a very easy question. But most of the people used to explain me partition, but not the bucket. They will not explain what is bucket and sometimes they will say bucket is a sub partition. But that is not actually a thing, right? Sub partition is again, I can create with partition itself. Then why should I have to come for bucket? So 
I need a use case or, or example. Okay, I, I'll forget about the word use case. Just go with an example. I need an example. You have 10 records and explain me uh, what is partition and bucket with the 10 records. So when to use partition, when to use bucket and when to use both. So this is what I was, my, my question is. Now, the second question, what is the default partition algorithm used in MapReduce and Spark? Okay, MapReduce and Spark both use the same default partition algorithm. So partition is something like MapReduce and Spark decide where to place the output files and how many files has to be get created. That is what MapReduce and Spark uh, uh, use a default partition to decide. Imagine I have a India record and US record. So that means I have to create a two partition, one for India, one for US. But that is something I have to decide. Right. But what if I am not deciding anything? I am not deciding anything. So I am just leaving it with Spark and MapReduce to decide where to place the output and how many files it has to take its own. I am giving it to Spark and MapReduce. In that case, how Spark and MapReduce are, are creating the partition based on what? So that we call it as a default partition algorithm. There is a name for that algorithm actually and you have to tell the name and you have to tell me the formula. It's just a one-liner formula. It's not a program or algorithm actually speaking. It's just a formula. You have to explain me that formula with some samples. Yes, this is what my second question is. And then third question. Bucket. Bucket. The hive bucket internal formula. Okay, so uh, bucket use a special formula to decide to place the hive records. So the answer for the second question and third question is same. Actually, they both have the same answers. Okay, fine. So next fourth question is list of file formats or storage formats you have used in hive. So list of file formats. Okay, so RC format, ORC format, parquet format. So you have these many high formats, right? So always when I ask this questions, people used to tell me this as an answer. Most of the times people used to tell me this. It depends on the use case. Yes, I understand it is depends on the use case and that is true. But after you say this word use case depends on use case. After you say the statement, you have to tell me what file format you have used and tell me why you have used this in your use case. Right, that is required. But people used to say it depends on the use case. We use Parquet, that's it. But why? Why in your use case you are using Parquet? Why not ORC? So that is what my my question, my intention is to, you have to give me some answers for it. Right, so th then uh, it will be good to understand, okay, you have used ORC because you have so many uh, read and you have so many aggregation queries. Yeah, then ORC is best. So something like that you have to say. Fine. So what is the next question? The fifth question is, Hive as seed tables. So Hive as seed tables. So Hive from uh, uh, the version 0. Point, after the version of 0. Point 0.12, Hive introduced as seed in uh, as seed concept in Hive, and that means you have you can able to do insert, update, and delete. You can able to do. So even though we have this as seed enabled in Hive, still most of the projects they are not using Hive as an as seed because Hive is meant for OLAP. It's not meant for OLTP. So if you say we are not using high ACID tables, you can say this because we are using it for OLAP, not for OLTP. You can say this actually. So if you are if you are not aware, means if you are not using it in your project, then fine. At least you can tell me if if someone tells me this, I am not using this in my project. The next question will be. So how to create a Hive asset table? That will be my next question. So even though you have not done this in your real time, but since you are a big data engineer, you are supposed to know at least you had you, you you'd have learned it right so how to do this how to create a table whenever i say people used to say we have to enable a property called a transaction equal to true and that means the table has been converted to acid no it is not there is three to four things that you have to do while creating a table and that will make your table as an acid table one out of that four point is transaction equal to true but we have two three more points which you have to do to convert your or to create a table as acid actually so people always used to tell me the answer transaction enable the transaction property true but that is not what i'm expecting you are supposed to say all the things at least right fine next question sixth question Okay, now we are entering into Spark, repartition and collase. Okay, so this will be my very first question and this is a very basic question that people, everyone aware of it, even you are a learner or you are an experienced candidate, you are supposed to explain this. People used to explain what is repartition but sometimes not about collase. 
so there is just a, a, a line of difference between a single a line of difference actually so you have to tell me that so where when we have to use repartition when i have to do collage so what happen if i use repartition and what happen if i use collage with respect to performance that's it fine so seventh so again in the sixth question right even if you have done you you, you have used only repartition in your project is still fine but you have to say at least what is collage you would have been learned it by the time right so you have to tell seventh question so okay this is kind of a scenario based question so i have two blocks in hdfs okay i have two blocks in hdfs so uh, i'm i'm going to run a spark program on top of this uh, let me say word count program now my question is how many input task count will be get created input task count so if you if you if you go for any mpp like massive parallel processing technology like mapreduce or spark we need to know how many task count and input right so in mapreduce means I, I would have asked you the question like this how many mapper task will be get created how many reducer task will be get created but like that i cannot ask you in spark because not only map and reduce we have so many other transformation in spark so i cannot ask you in that way instead i'm asking you how many input spark task will be created if my input is two blocks from hdfs now again the same question for output let me uh, put it as eighth question so output how many output task will be get created output task count in spark so some people used to tell me that is based on the repartition but i imagine i am not doing repartition i am not doing any repartition even without repartition still spark can able to write the uh, output files and it can able to write the uh, uh, output it can able to run the output task so i have i need to know how many task count it is so if you haven't noticed it just uh, take your uh, working uh, environment just go there and write a sample program and just notice it okay so just give two blocks from hdfs write a word count program and get it from the hdfs and and just go to your spark ua and check like how many uh, 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 task it is getting created okay or you can wait within a within two to three days I'm, I'm i'll make a solution video for this okay so ninth question i want you to write a spark word count program and here uh, i will not uh, uh, go with a specific language i will uh, i will just give the choice to the candidate itself you can choose spicepark or you can choose scala or you can choose java and one more point i wanted to tell you spicepark and spark they are not different most of the time people used to say this and and one candidate he told me this i i am not aware of spark but he said i i'm aware of spicepark so this in turn proves that he don't have any experience actually either learning or working experience right so that is a problem here so people uh, new learners are getting confused between spark and pyspark okay so see spark and pyspark is same spark is what the engine is all about and the uh, python scala java the language that you are picking to write actually so python plus spark pyspark but they didn't give any name for spark with scala spark with java they didn't give me give any name for it only for python spark they gave pi spark so don't get confused okay uh, spark and pi spark are still same okay fine so 10th question i want you to write a program you have to use a spark sql to join two tables or two files anything is fine two files or you can read a table from hive or oracle but you have to do a join so here i want you to use data frames not like, like there is a option for you to do spark.sql and within double quotes you can write the entire select query with join that is not i'm expecting this is also possible but that is not my expectation is anyone can write right so i want you to do with data frames okay so this is my 10 questions so i i always used to ask irrespective to the experience that you have and maybe the very first question maybe the zeroth question i can say like i will ex i will ask them to explain their project and tech stack experience that's it okay but the remaining these 10 questions is what i always used to ask irrespective to your experience i repeat that actually so here uh, out of these 10 questions like the four questions which is not important for me or if even if you say wrong it's fine for me so the, the questions which is which is not that much required for me the solutions are not required for me is if you don't say file format related stuff is still fine for me if you are not giving a proper answer for this it's still fine and acid is also still fine for me and then yes so the scenario question seven and eight so these four questions if you are not giving me the proper answer is completely fine but the remaining six is really required for me to answer 
so as i already told you i couldn't validate a candidate whether he has a learning experience or real time experience it is not possible for me to do that so since i always used to go with these 10 questions so if you are if the candidate has answered me for all these 10 questions then in a curiosity i used to ask many other questions from databases no sequels and uh, other streaming technologies but that is not accountable okay even if you say wrong it's still fine for me but it's not accountable so i used to concentrate on these 10 questions only so and then uh, again i used to ask programming languages questions and sequels also but that i will cover in the next upcoming videos and as i told you the video will be ready in like 3 to 4 days or even in couple of days it will be get ready so if the video is ready then i will update the uh, uh, solution uh, link video link in the description box of this video actually okay so if you want to get the complete list of uh, big data videos i have given all the uh, videos in the description box i have categorized everything and i also making lot of videos for big data project architecture series and then resume preparation and i have already uploaded uh, uh, like what uh, what you have to say before and after a project the top 10 points so i have made a so so many other videos uh, similar to this video how to project things in pro uh, interview i have already made a video and i have a special playlist for that as well so that is also there in the description box you can find those videos as well so thanks for watching please do share this with your friends and colleagues and please do share this in your linkedin as well and that is my request and if you really like this video please do subscribe channel and thanks for watching